for me, part of the search for goodness means uplifting the voices and the narratives of people that are engaged in, in a legacy of struggle. And in Chicago, so I write about how um, that, that takes many forms historically, right? So in 1919, when Chicagoans' homes were being bombed, uh, when black Chicagoans who wanted to move out of Bronzeville, which was kind of the segregated black neighborhood. Uh, Bronzeville, by the way, was a term that was uh, invented by a guy named Anthony Overton. Um, and it was an alternative to, uh, at the time, the neighborhood was called Darkie Town. So he was like, you know what? We can do better as black people. So he came up with this other term of Bronzeville. Um, better than Darkie Town, or the Black Belt was what it was also called. And so, so one form of resistance took the form of people just staying where they were and refu refusing to move, right? Refusing to move after the threat of physical violence. Another form of resistance was during the 1960s uh, when Benjamin Willis, who was the superintendent of schools at the time, would basically reinforce segregation by not allowing black students to transfer to schools in other parts of the city. And he built these things called Willis Wagons, which were big aluminum trailers to basically, instead of when schools were overcrowded, uh, to keep more black kids in one place, he would build these big trailers. And black parents would come and lay their bodies down in the ground to try to prevent the, the bulldozing from happening to lay the ground for these. Black parents would go to all white schools and demand that they uh, let their kids be enrolled, right, and would be arrested and taken out by the police in the 1960s. All the way up to 2015 when the diet, Walter H. Diet High School um, hunger strike happened when a group of hunger strikers went without solid food for 34 days to try to keep a school open. And uh, so I write about that in one of the chapters of the book. And they said that, that they stopped the hunger strike because they realized that the mayor was going to let them die. And, you know, what does it mean to be a person in the city who sees, who, where all evidence suggests that this person that's supposed to be your elected civic leader is literally going to let you die rather than reopen a high school? Right? And so I think that that legacy of resistance is really important, both because I want to historicize it and make sure that young people and organizers of all ages working today understand that this is part of your birthright, this is part of who and what you come from, um, but also because those stories don't get told all the time. And that's why you end up with people saying things like, if I was a slave, I would have run away, like Nat Turner, right? Like people are very ignorant of the different forms of resistance that black people have historically engaged in, in uh, over time. <laughs> 